Welcome to this scientific lecture on one of the most perplexing mysteries in modern astrophysics, the dark matter halo paradox. Let me start by describing the fundamental problem. When astronomers measure how fast galaxies rotate, they find something deeply puzzling. The outer regions of galaxies are spinning much faster than they should based on the visible matter we can see. Imagine a spiral galaxy, like our Milky Way. We see stars, gas, and dust distributed in a disk. According to Newton's laws of gravity, stars farther from the galactic center should orbit more slowly, just like planets in our solar system, where Neptune moves much slower than Mercury. Let me pose a question. What should happen to orbital velocity as we move outward from the galactic center according to classical physics? The answer is that orbital velocity should decrease with distance. This is because the gravitational force weakens as 1 over r squared, leading to velocities that drop as 1 over the square root of r. Let me derive this mathematically. For a star orbiting at radius r from the galactic center, we balance gravitational force with centripetal force. The gravitational force is g times m times m over r squared equals the centripetal force m versus squared over r, where m is the mass enclosed within radius r, m is the star's mass, and v is its orbital velocity. Solving for v, we get versus equals the square root of g m over r. This is the key equation. If most of the mass m is concentrated at the center, then as r increases, v should decrease as 1 over the square root of r. So velocity is proportional to 1 over the square root of r. This is called a Keplerian rotation curve, and it's what we see in our solar system. However, when Vera Rubin and Kent Ford measured actual galaxy rotation curves in the 1970s, they discovered something revolutionary. Here's a graph showing distance from the galactic center on the horizontal axis and rotation velocity on the vertical axis. The red curve shows what we expect from visible matter alone. After an initial rise in the inner regions, the velocity should fall off, following the 1 over square root of our law. But the green curve shows what astronomers actually observe. The rotation velocity rises initially, but then remains essentially constant, forming a flat rotation curve out to the edge of the visible galaxy and beyond. This flat rotation curve implies that there must be additional mass that we cannot see. For the velocity to remain constant, the enclosed mass m must increase linearly with radius r. If v is constant, then from our equation versus equals the square root of g m over r, we can solve to get m of r proportional to r. The mass must grow linearly with radius. Let's do a numerical estimate to see how much dark matter we need. Consider a typical spiral galaxy like the Milky Way. The visible mass in stars, gas, and dust is approximately 10 to the 11 solar masses, or about 100 billion times the mass of our sun. Typical rotation velocities in the outer regions are around 200 kilometers per second. The visible galaxy extends to about 50 kiloparsecs, where one kiloparsec is about 3,000 light years. Using our relation m equals versus squared r over g, we can estimate the total mass needed to support this rotation velocity. Plugging in versus equals 2 times 10 to the 5 meters per second, r equals 5 times 10 to the 20 meters, and g equals 6.67 .6 times 10 to the minus 11, we get approximately 3 times 10 to the 42 kilograms. Converting to solar masses, this is approximately 1.5 times 10 to the 12 solar masses, or about 1,500 billion solar masses. This means the dark matter mass is 10 to 15 times larger than all the visible matter combined. This invisible component completely dominates the gravitational dynamics of galaxies. This observation led cosmologists to propose that galaxies are embedded in massive dark matter halos. Think of it like this. The visible galaxy is like a small island floating in a vast ocean of dark matter. The dark matter halo extends far beyond the visible stars, creating a gravitational well that holds the galaxy together. Let me give you an analogy to help visualize this. Imagine a merry-go-round at a playground. If you have a small platform with children sitting on the edge, and you spin it, the children on the outer edge would fly off unless they hold on tightly. The platform needs to be strong enough or massive enough to keep them from flying away. 
Now imagine the platform extends much farther outward than you can see, and it's much more massive than it appears. This hidden mass provides the extra gravitational force needed to keep the children moving in circles at high speeds without flying off. Here's where the paradox comes in. Despite decades of intensive searching, physicists have not been able to directly detect dark matter particles. Let me ask, based on observations, what properties must dark matter have? Dark matter must not emit, absorb, or reflect light, making it completely invisible to telescopes. It must interact primarily through gravity, and possibly through the weak nuclear force, but not through electromagnetism or the strong force. Over the years, physicists have proposed several candidates for what dark matter particles might be. The leading candidate for many years was WIMPs, or weakly interacting massive particles. These hypothetical particles would have masses between 10 and 1,000 times the proton mass and interact through the weak nuclear force. Another candidate is the axion, a very light particle originally proposed to solve a different problem in particle physics called the strong CP problem. Axions would have masses billions of times smaller than electrons. Sterile neutrinos are another possibility. These are hypothetical cousins of ordinary neutrinos, but much heavier and interacting even more weakly with ordinary matter. Some researchers have even suggested primordial black holes formed in the early universe could be the dark matter, though this is less favored by current observations. The search for dark matter particles has been one of the most intensive efforts in experimental physics. Direct detection experiments involve placing ultra-sensitive detectors deep underground to shield them from cosmic rays. These detectors wait for a dark matter particle to collide with an atomic nucleus, producing a tiny flash of light or vibration. Major experiments include LX and Xenon, which use liquid xenon as the target material, and Super CDMS, which uses supercooled germanium and silicon crystals. Indirect detection experiments search for the products of dark matter particles annihilating with each other in regions of high dark matter density, such as the galactic center or the sun. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN attempts to create dark matter particles in high-energy proton collisions. If successful, these particles would escape detection, appearing as missing energy and momentum. Despite decades of effort and increasingly sensitive experiments, all of these searches have come up empty-handed. Experiment after experiment has set increasingly stringent limits on the properties dark matter particles could have, but no positive detection has been made. Direct detection experiments have now ruled out WIMPs with the expected properties across a wide range of masses. After 40 years of searching, we have found nothing. The LHC has not seen any evidence for dark matter production in particle collisions, despite being able to probe energy scales up to several trillion electron volts. This null result creates a profound paradox. We have overwhelming evidence that dark matter exists from its gravitational effects, yet we cannot find any trace of the particles that should make it up. The failure to detect dark matter particles has led some physicists to question whether dark matter exists at all. Perhaps instead, our theory of gravity needs modification. The most well-known alternative is m on or Modified Newtonian Dynamics, proposed by Mordechai Milgram in 1983. In Mond, Newton's second law, F equals ma, is modified to F equals m times mu of a over a zero times a, where mu is a transition function and a zero is a critical acceleration scale of about 10 to the minus 10 meters per second squared. Remarkably, MOND can fit galaxy rotation curves quite well using just this one additional parameter. In the regime where accelerations are much smaller than a zero, the effective gravitational force becomes stronger, mimicking the effect of dark matter. However, MOND faces serious challenges. It struggles to explain galaxy cluster dynamics, gravitational lensing observations, and the pattern of fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background radiation. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for dark matter over modified gravity comes from the bullet cluster. The bullet cluster consists of two galaxy clusters that have collided and passed through each other. The hot gas in the clusters, shown in red, interacts electromagnetically and gets slowed down by the collision, piling up in the middle. But gravitational lensing measurements show that most of the mass, shown in blue, has passed right through the collision without slowing down. This is exactly what we expect if dark matter is made of weakly interacting particles that pass through each other almost unimpeded. 
This spatial separation between the visible matter and the gravitational mass is extremely difficult to explain with modified gravity theories, which predict the mass should be where the ordinary matter is located. The paradox deepens when we look at smaller scales. Not only can we not detect dark matter particles, but dark matter simulations predict structures that we don't observe. Computer simulations of dark matter halos predict that the density should rise steeply toward the center, forming what's called a cuspy profile. However, observations of small galaxies show flatter, core-like density profiles. Simulations predict a density that goes as rho of r proportional to 1 over r near the center. But observations suggest a density that's approximately constant in the central regions. Simulations also predict that massive galaxies like the Milky Way should have hundreds or even thousands of small satellite galaxies orbiting them. But we only observe a few dozen. Some researchers argue these problems can be resolved by including the effects of ordinary baryonic matter, such as supernova feedback and star formation, which could redistribute dark matter and suppress the formation of small halos. To fully appreciate the paradox, we need to understand dark matter's role in the larger cosmological picture. The current standard model of cosmology is called Lambda CDM, where Lambda represents dark energy and CDM stands for cold dark matter. In this model, about 31% of the universe's energy density is matter, and 69% is dark energy. Of that 31% matter, only about one-sixth is ordinary baryonic matter, while five-sixths is dark matter. This means dark matter accounts for approximately 26% of the total energy density of the universe. It completely dominates the matter content of the cosmos. Dark matter played a critical role in the early universe. After the Big Bang, tiny density fluctuations in the dark matter began to collapse under gravity, forming the seeds around which galaxies and galaxy clusters would eventually form. Let me ask, why was dark matter essential for structure formation? Why couldn't ordinary matter alone do the job? The answer has to do with radiation pressure. In the early universe, ordinary matter was tightly coupled to photons through electromagnetic interactions. The intense radiation pressure prevented ordinary matter from collapsing until much later. But dark matter, immune to radiation pressure, could begin collapsing immediately, creating gravitational wells into which ordinary matter later fell. The cosmic microwave background radiation provides some of the strongest evidence for dark matter. The CMB shows tiny temperature fluctuations of about one part in 100,000. These fluctuations encode information about the composition and geometry of the early universe. When we analyze the angular power spectrum of these fluctuations, we see a series of acoustic peaks. The heights and positions of these peaks depend sensitively on the amount of dark matter versus ordinary matter. The data from the Planck satellite and other CMB experiments provide a nearly perfect fit to the Lambda CDM model with dark matter, but cannot be fit without it. This is independent evidence for dark matter from an era when the universe was only 380,000 years old. Given the null results from detection experiments, theorists are exploring new possibilities for what dark matter might be. One idea is self-interacting dark matter, where dark matter particles can scatter off each other through a new force. This could help solve the core cusp problem by allowing dark matter to thermalize in galaxy centers. Fuzzy dark matter proposes that dark matter consists of extremely light bosons with masses around 10 to the minus 22 electron volts. At such low masses, quantum effects become important on galactic scales, potentially smoothing out the small-scale structure problems. Composite dark matter theories suggest that dark matter might not be elementary particles, but rather bound states of more fundamental constituents, analogous to how protons are made of quarks. Hidden sector models propose a rich dark sector with multiple particle types, forces, and possibly even dark atoms or dark molecules. Our universe might be just one sector of a much larger particle physics landscape. This paradox has profound implications for both cosmology and particle physics. Either we're missing something fundamental about particle physics. Dark matter exists but is more exotic than we imagined, interacting so weakly that our current experiments cannot detect it. Or perhaps our understanding of gravity itself needs major revision. This would require a new theory that reduces to general relativity on solar system scales, but behaves differently on galactic scales. It's even possible that both are true. Perhaps there is some dark matter, but less than we think, and gravity is also modified. This would be the most challenging scenario. 
because we'd need to disentangle two unknown effects. So where do we go from here? The experimental community is pursuing several new directions. Next-generation direct detection experiments like LZ and XENONNT are pushing sensitivity to unprecedented levels, probing parameter space for WIMPs that has never been explored before. For ultralight dark matter like axions, experiments using atomic clocks and quantum sensors can detect oscillating fundamental constants that would arise if these particles exist. Gravitational wave detectors might observe signatures from primordial black holes or other compact dark matter candidates through their merger events. On the computational side, ever more detailed simulations, including realistic baryonic physics, are testing whether the small-scale problems can be resolved within the standard dark matter paradigm. Let me pose a final question. Is it possible that we're completely wrong about dark matter and the explanation is something we haven't even thought of yet? The answer is yes, it's possible. Science must always remain open to revolutionary new ideas. However, the evidence for dark matter from multiple independent observations is extraordinarily strong. Any alternative explanation must account for galaxy rotation curves, gravitational lensing, the CMB, large-scale structure formation, and the bullet cluster, all with the same underlying physics. Let me provide a framework for thinking about this paradox systematically. The evidence that something beyond visible matter affects gravitational dynamics on galactic and cosmological scales is nearly certain. This has been verified through dozens of independent methods. The nature of this dark matter remains completely unknown. Forty years of experiments have not revealed its identity. The standard candidates, like WIMPs, are looking increasingly unlikely as experiments rule out more and more of the parameter space. Modified gravity remains a possibility, but faces significant challenges in explaining all observations consistently. Resolving this paradox may well take several more decades of theoretical and experimental work. We may need revolutionary new physics that goes beyond our current framework. This could involve extra dimensions, new symmetries, or principles we haven't yet imagined. Alternatively, the answer might be simpler than we think, hiding in some corner of parameter space that experiments will eventually reach. History teaches us that major discoveries often come from unexpected places. Dark matter might be discovered accidentally in an experiment designed for something else entirely, just as many great discoveries in physics have been made. Or, a theoretical breakthrough might suddenly illuminate the path forward, showing us exactly where to look and what to look for. This paradox represents one of the most significant problems in all of science. It demonstrates that despite our impressive understanding of many phenomena, there are fundamental aspects of nature that remain deeply mysterious. We don't know what makes up most of the universe. This keeps scientists humble and maintains a sense of wonder. We're not at the end of physics. We're perhaps still near the beginning of understanding the full picture. Let me summarize this complex topic. Observations show conclusively that galaxies rotate far too quickly to be explained by the stars, gas, and dust we can see. This requires roughly five to ten times more mass in the form of dark matter that interacts only gravitationally. Yet despite 40 years of increasingly sensitive experiments, we have not detected a single dark matter particle. This creates a profound paradox that challenges our understanding of both cosmology and particle physics. Whatever the resolution turns out to be, it will almost certainly reshape our understanding of fundamental physics in ways we cannot yet anticipate. The dark matter halo paradox remains one of the deepest, and most fascinating mysteries in modern science, demanding answers that may ultimately revolutionize our entire understanding of the cosmos.